so the whole point of this one is I wanted to highlight a whole bunch of things which get said in our industry and they get said day in and day out and like everything everybody's it doesn't matter what the industry is you can always come across advice you can always come across a myriad different views and that's brilliant but as we all know not every piece of information is one that you should be following so the whole point of this blog post is to talk you through my 10 pet hates of bits of information that really aren't worth worrying about aren't worth dealing with and actually some point sometimes they're just plain wrong so number one at the moment a very very large vendor is saying on their posters security is everything and i would first of all argue that's simply not the case it's not the case that security is everything security is a major constituent part and what i mean by that is i know i know there's going to be a whole lot of my peers saying what do you mean liz we've spent ages getting people to even listen to us i know but if you are a major international organization your brand values and your service to your customer base is everything to you and that service is the foundation upon which you do everything that you need to do and that could be coca-cola that could be virgin atlantic that could be any number of organizations that we all know down to small companies even what's everything to them is being that entity and being that identity security isn't everything it performs a role and a function to enable that enterprise to be able to be whatever it is they want to be number two you need to be afraid I mean and what I mean by this is everybody is telling you right now be afraid the landscape is changing it's all incredibly bad everybody's getting hacked you're going to get a massive GDPR fine yes yes okay we all have risks in our lives we all have risks when we walk down the street we don't all stay in our houses wrapped up in cotton wool because life is too scary we all manage risk and we get on with it so it's time for us to leave behind the idea of being afraid and just say i am not afraid i am going to take reasonable precautions and put in a solid defense network and then i can move forward and that's what i'm here to tell you and that's what we're able to deliver for you my third one is spending big as though that's some kind of magic ticket which means that you'll never get hacked again actually it's not Hackers don't care how much you spent on your network. Hackers don't care if you wrote a major check and you announced it to the board. Nobody cares about any of that stuff. Actually, what you need to do is to make sure that whatever it is you have is correctly configured and optimized to do the best job possible. Simply writing the check will not do it. So yes, you might have to make a major investment and that will be for very, very good reasons but take that major investment and then make the most out of the technology that you've procured so that you get a really, really good security service. Simply writing the check won't do it. You need to then play the game and make that a solid investment afterwards. Okay, number four, security is an IT problem. Security has always been seen as an IT problem, but frankly, if you're still expecting your IT director or your poor IT managers to deal with this all on their own, there needs to be a sea change in your board level thinking because actually security ramifications of security going wrong far outstrip um, anything that happens in the IT department. It's damaged a reputation. It's potentially fines that take you off the board literally off the landscape um, in the UK and could wipe, are going to take down major companies. So it's no longer an IT issue. It's something that should be discussed at every board meeting. It's something that board members should be absolutely aware of and on top of and understanding and being very, very confident about the decisions that they're making. Number five is a simple one. It won't happen to us. It will happen to you. It does happen to you. If you think you've never had a cyber attack, that worries me no end because I can almost guarantee that you absolutely have. And if you're not aware of it, that frightens me more. So actually, it will happen to you. It's not about whether it will, but when it will and how well you recover when it happens. That's the really, really interesting part. 
Number six is we're safe in the cloud. And people are saying to me at the moment, woohoo, let's go for cloud transformation. It's going to make all my problems go away. I don't have to worry about this stuff anymore. And frankly, that's just not the case. If you read any of the literature and any of the terms and conditions for the major providers, whether it's Azure or AWS or any of the other providers that are out there at the moment, they will provide rudimentary security for stuff going into and out of their platform, but they will not provide any security for stuff that happens within the data lake that you create with inside of their platform. So that's down to you to provide. So think about it. If you have a huge data center at the moment and you have multiple systems, multiple applications, lots of users accessing that data center, there are security controls in place at all stages to make sure that the right level of person is available to get the right information. and They can't see things that they shouldn't be seeing. If you then transfer those applications to the cloud, the exact same exists. You need to, pr uh, to protect one system from another and one user group from another so that you can ensure that your data is as safe as it would be in the physical world. Number seven is an interesting one because we've done this with very, very large multinational corporations and I have seen the little faces go very, very pale in the room and everybody stops speaking when I ask them this question, which is, have you got a DR plan? And certainly everybody says, yes, 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 we all have a DR plan. And in some cases it's written into contracts and so on. Wonderful, marvellous, lovely. I don't care. Let's go down to the server room and let's switch some stuff off and see whether you recover from it. And that's when the faces all change and everybody gets very, very worried. Your DR plan should be such that you can test it at any time and know with a high degree of certainty that things are going to happen as you plan for them to happen and that things are going to fail over in the timescales that you expect. And you should absolutely be able to demonstrate that to your board, a third party or anybody else for that matter, because you know very well that these things only fail in the worst moment at the worst possible time. And I don't want you to be exposed when that happens. I want you to know that the plan works and you are confident about it. Number eight says, the blog I wrote says, application providers have my back. And there's a good reason why I've put that in there, which is that there's a lot of large application providers in niche areas of business. We do a lot of work with niche areas of business. And these major, major applications are saying, listen, don't worry, I can provide security to cover my applications. I can provide security to cover your entire enterprise. They can't and they don't. Actually, what a lot of them are doing is coming to the table very late with a suite of solutions that they've picked and put together, which may suit them and it may suit 90% of their customers, but it doesn't necessarily fit you. And it also has ramifications for everything else that goes on in there in your business. So I would suggest that actually put applications providers to one side, let them do what they're really good at and then provide your own solid foundation for everything that goes on in your network, whether it's the major application or a really small connector. You need it all covered. You don't need any gaps. And that's why application providers are not the best people to do it. Number nine is point solutions are enough and actually they're not enough anymore. They had their time, they did their job. Some of them are amazing, but the gaps left around point solutions are the big, big problem. The threat landscape is too broad now, it's moving too fast. And yes, yes, you could put a, a point solution in which works for you right now, but I've seen this happen. It worked for you 18 months ago, it doesn't work for you now. It won't work for you in three years time. The gaps are too large. They will only grow and that's where they fall down. Actually having a suite of solutions that does what you need it to do and protects everything in your network is a far, far better option. The last one on my list is to say, my IT guys are brilliant. They can, they can just do everything in security, right? And I would say, I don't think they can actually. There are some brilliant, brilliant people working in your IT team. I know there are. I know if we came and looked at your your staff, we would 
find some absolute superheroes in there and they are and they're managing lots and lots of applications they're doing very very big jobs and they're having to handle all of that with limited resources limited hours in the day to then ask them to be not just managing security but actually developing new solutions for you and developing new configurations for you is i think a bridge too far unless you have a very very major it team which even most blue chips don't have anymore i would suggest that the best thing you can do is come to an expert and have them help you even if it's a couple of days a month just to you know, make sure that you get that real expert level support on security that will stand you in great stead for the rest of your business. So those are my 10 pet hates. If you agree with me, please tell me. If you don't agree with me, I would love to hear your views. We love to hear what people think. We love to have our own views challenged. And um, if you've got something to add, we would love to hear from you.